Once we've practiced how to take our raw scores and turn them into z-scores, remember z-scores are the values that tell us how many standard deviation a data value is away from its mean and in what direction away from the mean it is. Um, we'll also want to practice going from our z-scores back to our raw scores so we can make the conversions both ways. Now in this example, I have men's heights in the United States have a mean of 69.0 inches and a standard deviation of 2.8 inches. And I want to find the height for particular z-scores that are given to me. So in the first one, part A, a z is equal to 2.10. For part B, when I have a z-score of negative 1.50. And part C, where z is equal to zero. Now since z-scores tell us how many standard deviations away from the mean a data value is and on what side of the mean, when I have a positive z-score like in part A, I know that my raw score is going to come out to be a number that is bigger than the mean. And it's going to be 2.1 standard deviations bigger than the mean. For part B, when my z-score is negative, I know I'm going to get a data value that is smaller than the mean and it's actually smaller than the mean by 1.5 standard deviations for this particular example. And then in part C, with a z-score of zero, that means my data value is zero standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm actually going to get the mean value for this last part. But let's see how that works through when we're working with the formula that they usually give us. So, with their giving me the z-score, and they want me to find the raw score or the specific value for that particular setting that they give you, the formula that you're going to use is that your data value x is equal to the mean of your data set plus your z-score times the standard deviation and that gives you your raw score back. So in part A, when they give us our z-score is 2.10, I'm going to find my raw score x by taking the mean of the data set, which in this case is 69.0, and adding to it the z-score they gave me, 2.10, multiplied to the standard deviation of your data set, the 2.8. So here I have 69.0 plus when I take 2.10 times the 2.8, I get 5.88. And then when I add these together, I get x is equal to 74.88. And as I expected, I got a data value that is larger than my mean when I started with the z-score that was positive. Let's do part B. For part B, my z-score is a negative 1.50 they gave me, and they want me to get the height back. So I have my raw score x is the mean of the data set 69, and then I have plus my z-score of a negative 1.50 times my standard deviation 2.8. So x is equal to 69.0, and then when I multiply the negative 1.50 times the 2.8, I get a negative 4.2. And then I get my raw score of, well, 69.0 minus 4.2 gives me a 64.8. And these are in inches for these heights. And again, as anticipated, I got a data value a raw score that is smaller than the mean because in this particular example I had a z-score that was negative. Part C, for a z-score of zero, my raw score is the number I'm, oh sorry, my raw score is the mean of my distribution 69.0 plus my z-score of zero times my standard deviation 2.8. Well, 0 times 2.8 is 0, and 69 plus 0 is 69 inches. Now, kind of as a recap, and something that can help you just make sure that it is in the ballpark of what you should be getting for these values, and a common sense sort of double check, when you think back to just some of the um, integer values of your z-scores, and putting the specifics of your problem 
underneath those values. Where your z-score is zero, that is actually your mean, your 69.0 for this particular example. And if I want the raw score that's exactly one standard deviation above the mean, then I'm going to take my 69.0 and add my standard deviation 2.8. So that's going to give me my 71.8 when I add that on that. If you want to add another standard deviation, then I'll take the 71.8 and add a 2.8 again, and that will give me 74.6. And if I take the 74.6 and add a 2.8 again, I'll get 77.4. Now let's go ahead and subtract our standard deviations. If I take my mean of 69 and I subtract 2.8, I get 66.2. If I take my 66.2 and subtract my 2.8 again, I get 63.4. And if I take the 63.4 and subtract 2.8 again, I get 60.6. So these are the raw scores that hit right on the integer values where our z-scores were. And when we look at our z-score 2.1 that we converted to a raw score, 2.1 is bigger than 2 but less than 3, so right in here. So it should have a raw score that's between 74.6 and 77.4, which we got. A negative 1.5 is a z-score that's between negative 1 and negative 2. So the raw score should be somewhere between our 66.2 and our 63.4, and we got 64.8. Again, it helps us with the common sense to see if what we're getting back as answers from this are reasonable so that we can kind of tell if we've got the formula right or if we needed to um, think a little bit harder to make sure that we put the numbers in or they belonged in our equations. But this was an example of taking z-scores and changing them back into their raw scores.